The best destinations, exciting hotels, smart airlines, and the best value for money deal. All this in conversation with some of the finest experts from India and abroad. Join me, Ashwini Kakkar, on Live Wire with Ash. Hello and welcome to Live Wire with Ash. We are extremely privileged today to have with us Mr. Raymond Bixen. Welcome to the show, Raymond. It's well, it's great to be here. Thank you, Ash. Mr. Bixen represents a hundred-year-old brand synonymous with luxury and hospitality in India, the Taj Hotel. Taj Hotels is the flagship hospitality arm of Indian hotels promoted by the Tata Group. Taj Hotels Resorts and Palaces comprises 93 hotels in 55 locations across India with an additional 16 international hotels. Historically, known as India's foremost luxury hotel brand, Taj has now recast itself as a multi-branded hotel group with hotels ranging from the lavish Taj Palaces to the more affordable Ginger Hotels. How does it feel to be at the helm of this wonderful institution which has over a hundred years of experience in the hospitality trade? Well, it's, as you know, it's been really for me quite an honor and the whole experience of being back in Asia once again in, in probably one of the most exciting markets in the world has really been what's drawn me to uh, come to India and to be part of, of the Taj and the Tata group. Yes, and I think, you know, it's very exciting to hear that you talk about the Tata group. So what are those special things that the House of Tatas brings to the party? Uh, you know, it's, 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 to a certain extent, it's very hard to put your finger on it and, 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 and understand it, except that you can say that it's, it's deeply rooted in the DNA of the companies that uh, belong to the Tata Group for the last 146 years. And remember that today, Taj Hotels, Resorts and Palaces, or Indian Hotels, are the longest standing group in the Tata Group. We are 110 years young. I didn't know that. And we're actually working on our second century today. But it's one of the iconic global brands who have catered to, say, the carriage luxury trade for over a century. And so it, it, I think that's been the exciting aspect of being also the, with the House of Tatas, who have a, you know, a, and a business which touches people's lives on a daily basis. And amongst them, besides, um, you know, cars and, and steel and, and perfumes and everything that you use on a daily basis, the hospitality side of things. Of course. Yeah. You know, this is probably the only Indian group that's had an aggressive strategy of global acquisitions. And, uh, you know, I think what's happening is you're probably trying to become globally competitive in the face of all these global brands who are attacking the Indian market now. But has this global acquisition thing uh, worked? And how, uh, how well does it uh, augur for the Indian traveler, for example? Well, I think it's a, it's a great thing because what happens today is that as the, um, the domestic market has really been controlled by the main players, Taj, Oberoi, ITC, and you know, healthy competition for the last 40, 50 years. Right. But today our market is under tremendous pressure and tremendous, tremendous competition from the global international brands. So Marriott, Starwood, Intercontinental, uh, uh, Hyatt's, uh, all the big brands, Accor, have set their targets on this market. Why? Because not only do we have one of the fastest growing economies in the world, but we also have an extremely explosive economy with a growing middle class and a higher, higher level of disposable income. And to top that all off, there has been a tremendous upsurge with the open skies policies sure. of, of Indians traveling abroad. And there's been over 10 million travelers a year outbound out of India and I would, I would venture to say that in the next five to 10 years, 
that Indian traveler will be just as important uh, for the Louis Vuittons and the Gucci's and the brands of this market that is growing exponentially, you know, day by day. That's an amazing yes. insight, Raymond. Yes. That's fantastic. Yes. Uh, and you brought up this issue of brands. So, you know, uh, I think the Taj has also taken a kind of a leadership role in uh, re-architecting its brands. And over the last few months, I think there's been lots and lots of activity in the group in, in terms of changing its brands. So can you tell us a little bit more about what this means to the customer in terms of the new brands and so on? Well, I think it was, it was very important for the customers, most of all for the customer. And, the, and for a matter of fact, for the 40, 50 years that the Taj went from one hotel to 40 hotels, to 60 hotels, to over 115 hotels today, was the fact that, remember, 115 hotels covers a whole range of product, right. a whole range of service, a level of differentiation of bathroom with marble, bathroom with tiles, carpet, wood, uh, all of these things. So it was really important to be able to differentiate the levels of hotels that we have, two-star, three-star, four-star, five-star in our brands, and to be able to compete head-on with the international competition that's coming to, to, of course, to, to our market, to our market. And it's all a question for really for us of survival for the next century because the real, real, the real uh, onslaught is are these global international companies who have, as I said, China is saturated, here is the growing place. It's, it's one of the BRIC countries, as you know, but one of the leading, actually, global leaders today in growth. Right. So, so there will be different price points is what I'm understanding, even though the underlying values of service and so on will remain constant, I guess. Correct. Well, basically, four brands, starting first with Taj Hotels, Resorts and Palaces, represents all of our luxury hotels. And that would be, let's say, from... $300 to thousands of dollars for a room. And then in the four-star upper upscale brands, we have our Vivanta by Taj Hotels and Resorts. Okay. So both for the, the, the leisure traveler and the business traveler, we provide that contemporary, you know, uh, cutting. Look, cutting edge look and feel hotel. Then we have our more traditional gateway hotels and resorts more in the secondary and tertiary markets, right. hill station retreats, air, uh, you know, cities that are growing today in leaps and bounds, right. but really not quite ready for a luxury hotel in the next five to 10 years, maybe, but we'll be ready. And of course, the Ginger brand, right. which was Ginger Hotels, which, which was our, uh, uh, our nano. Innovation. It, 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 yeah. it's a, it, it was really a no frills hotel. Right. And everything that we have has a price point, you're exactly right, with a product that looks and meets the demands of what the, what the guest is of looking the for, of the segment. And especially today with so much aspirational growth, we are very fortunate. We have 540 million domestic travelers. So over the last two, three years, while the world sort of tanked and it was very, very difficult and everyone struggled, the domestic market kept our brand really doing well. But besides that, we couldn't have all of our portfolio, all in one basket. Right. You know, one of the things that most Indians feel proud of is their heritage. And a, a good element of the Taj brand and what the hotel company has done is to restore and manage some of the real palaces of India. Well, what has been your experience with that? Well, you know, to be today at the helm of a company that can say Taj, hotels, resorts, and palaces, right. we have 14 authentic palaces, which we have been serving the, the, the Maharajas and the families for over a century. Uh, that palace experience of which you can live in a, this is a Taj Mahal, this is our first palace built right. at the turn of the century, uh, Taj Mahal Palace in Mumbai. Yeah. Um, but from the Lake Palace in Udaipur, the uh, uh, Umed Bhavan Palace in Jodhpur. Right. Some of the most significant uh, private palaces in the world have been restored so that our guests or coming to them can see uh, and, and experience this lifestyle that uh, has, been, 
has been there for centuries. Of course. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, your latest acquisition, the Falaknuma Palace in Hyderabad, for example? Well, two exciting palaces, actually. The, but I think one of the most un unbelievable was been the Falaknuma Palace in Hyderabad. Right. It was a palace for the Nizam of Hyderabad, right. which, had, which had been uninhabited for 72 years. Can you imagine this beautiful, beautiful, uh, uh, iconic building on the top of the hill overlooking uh, uh, the city of Hyderabad? And it, it was really in disrepair. It took a lot of love, uh, you know, attention to detail to, to restore this, to make that experience as authentic. It's really, it's an authentic experience uh, of, of what it's like to have lived and, 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 and been in these palaces. Right. We'll take a short break, but on the other side, we discover a man who is American by birth, but has now become an Indian at heart. आने वाले दशक में टूरिज्म इंडस्ट्री के सबसे जाने माने और नामी खिलाड़ी भारतीय पर्यटक को एक ग्राहक के रूप में अहम स्थान देंगे ताज ग्रुप के विभिन्न ब्रांड्स हर वर्ग और हर किस्म के पर्यटक की जरूरतें पूरी करते हैं ताज ग्रुप के सर्वश्रेष्ठ पैलेस होटल्स पर्यटक को देते हैं सदियों पुराने भारतीय महलों में रहने का असली अनुभव Welcome back to Live Wire with Ash. Keeping me company today on this whirlwind journey is the head of Taj Hotels, Mr. Raymond Bixen. Raymond Bixen's characteristic laugh and broad smile immediately explains why he is one of the world's most respected and successful hoteliers. Now MD and CEO of the Taj Hotels Group. Born in Hawaii, Raymond says he's really just a surfer boy at heart and plans most of his holidays around water. Like US President Obama with whom he shares a common hometown, Raymond always carries a jovial aloha spirit wherever he goes. Uh, you know, apart from the hotels per se, the Taj has a lot of other side interests, uh, what I call the extensions. You know, you've started this whole concept of residences, you've got these no-frills kind of properties, yes. you've got these jungle lodges, you've started these spas, and then there's the air charter business. So what's all this about? What is this basket? Well, you know, we've been charged with sort of really just beyond our core business of being in the hotel business. Mm -hmm. We provide, obviously, place to sleep right. and wonderful places to eat. So sure. the, I guess the m most natural extension from our restaurants and, 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 and uh, uh, banquets have been the, uh, uh, the catering business, right. whether it's restaurants, whether it's food we serve on airlines. And that's actually quite an old business. We've had it for over 50 years. Really? For 45, it's actually 45 years old this year. Oh, my God. So, and with that came the idea of you know, uh, uh, charter aviation, uh, using the... Uh, the uh, 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 corporate aircraft for corporate travel mm -hmm. uh, within, with, within with, with anywhere in the world today right. and having those alliances. Uh, the spa business today, it's a $40 billion global industry, which- Just the spa uh, business. Just the spa business, so wellness, as you know. And just imagine when somebody says to you, the best spas are in Thailand and Bali, I sit back and I say to myself, well, what is it that you experience in a spa? Meditation, yoga, aromatherapy, Ayurveda, and where does it come from? All from India. All from India. This is something that is tomorrow's, uh, uh, I'd say, uh, uh, new industry right. is wellness, as you know. Taking these century-old traditions, taking the century-old practices, these authentic, I say, signature therapies become part of our Jiva Spa brand. Okay. And today we have 71 spas under Jiva Spas. We're one of the largest, if not the largest, spa um, company in India today. And something, a brand which I think is, we're ready, I think, to take that, uh, take that outside of the country as well and to do 
freestanding spas. That's really a great business. Fantastic. Retail has always been something that we've done. Uh, and the idea is to showcase the best of what India has to offer through its crafts. And we... we the we, artisans. The artisans today, which is a trade that we cannot let die. We have to help promote. And our, our, our CSR, Corporate Social Responsibility, with the Varanasi weavers, all of the saris that are in our Taj palaces are done by the weavers, where we give you know, families uh, uh, sustainable livelihoods to, to help with that. And also remember not to let these dying crafts, the rich, rich, century-old heritage should not be lost. And we use it as a showcase to showcase the best of India for the guests visiting us here. And, and look at the Indian art today. The art scene is just you know, exploding. exploding. Right. And uh, these are finding uh, the, the, the new people. Music, we're sitting here today in the Ravi Shankar suite yes. in the Taj. Amazing. Ravi Shankar suite. This is where Ravi Shankar taught George Harrison to play the sitar. Oh my God. Uh, right before the Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. So we have a sitar from Maestro, Goosebumps. from the Maestro. We have uh, posters. We have photos of himself and George Harrison here. And this has been by uh, Maestro Shankar and his family uh, decorated and the design with the interior designer. It's a heritage of, of, of the country. And we thought that it merited being called Preserved the, 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 the Ravi Shankar, Shankar Suite. Much sought after queries are put to rest by our guests in Aapka Sawal. Hi, I'm Rakesh Bakshi. Uh, I'm from Mumbai, Bombay. And uh, I'm a traveler, business traveler. And uh, I love to stay in the Taj group of hotels because, uh, particularly because Taj is an Indian brand. And uh, I would like to feel at home when I'm overseas. I would like to know in particular what special Taj would like to do for me, uh, a customer like me when I, I'm living abroad in their hotels. Well, not just abroad, in any Taj hotel, everywhere all over the globe, go online, become a Taj Inner Circle loyalty customer. Okay. Once you become a customer, go online, it doesn't cost you anything, membership is free. You will become a member of our elite group of guests of the Taj. You will have special offers during the off season, we will let you know what's going on in events all over the country, all over the globe, in all of our hotels. And with that, special offers for you as a member of our loyalty program, the Taj Inner Circle. Just go online, www.tajhotels.com, and become a member of our loyalty program, Taj Inner and Circle. And then you'll get special service at every Taj property across the globe? Every property, you'll get specials. You'll get to know what food's being served, what type of food festivals we have, what type of events are going on, what type of room specials you can get, how you can make your next vacation just that much more special. Wonderful. So what we'd like to ask you, Raymond, is what are your passions other than hoteliering? <laughs> well, you know, I grew up in Hawaii. Right. I love to be in the water. I love to body surf. I love to surf. So. Actually, my holidays are always somewhat figured around the water in some way. So I have a new paddle board that I, just, uh, that, that I have, which is a stand-up surfboard that you wow. don't need a wave to surf in. I have a number of surfboards. So I, I, I love the ocean. I, I think, really, I love uh, music. Yeah, uh, I've, I've seen you at a lot of concerts. And you can tell I love to eat. So <laughs> food and cuisine is always something that, you know, I think... It's a passion of almost all hotels, and it's also an occupational hazard at the same time. <laughs> of course. Uh, well, one of the things we'd like to find out is, apart from your own hotels, which hotels do you rate highly amongst the world? Which are your most favorite hotels, and which are your most favorite destinations? Maybe in India and abroad, both. What a tricky question. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've been really fortunate in, in our careers in the travel business, you and I both know, to, to, to visit very uh, uh, fabulous uh, uh, properties and hotels. And I, I, I have to say that uh, today, um, the, the Oriental in Bangkok still remains one of my favorite hotels. There's just an ambiance about it, the way the, traf the, the, 
staff looks at you. you. You haven't been there for two years. They'll remember what room you had. It's really a very special well, place. it's been one of the best hotels in the world oh. for the last 20, 25 years. Yeah, it's a w wonderful, wonderful hotel. Oriental Bangkok's one of my favorite uh, 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 international hotels. I have to say that probably my, my, my favorite uh, Taj Hotel would be the, the Lake Palace in Udaipur. Being not growing up here, but each time I go to Udaipur and see this, probably the second most photographed photo after the Taj in Agra, being this white shimmering palace in the middle of Lake Pachola, it just, you know, it's really magic. And when you see it at night, when the palace is lit up, when the city palace complex is lit up, with the hotels on both sides around the lake, it really is a very magic destination. And it really helps, I'd say, um, uh, bring that awareness of India as a destination. And Raymond, do you have any personal quirks or travel habits which you would like to share with our viewers? <laughs> Actually, it's very simple. Drink a lot of water <laughs> and, and, and sleep as much as you can on a plane. Sure. It's time to take a short break. But on the other side, we track the fascinating travels of Raymond across five continents. Taj Group ke Jiva Spas mein parampariq bharatiya swasth prathayen और आराम का संगम है एक ताज इनर सर्कल मेंबर के रूप में आपको ताज की तरफ से स्पेशल ऑफर्स मिलेंगे और रोचक भारतीय पर्व और फायदे के बारे में भी आपको जानकारी दी जाएगी ताज ग्रुप की सेवाओं का निचोड़ है भारत का सर्वश्रेष्ठ चेहरा दर्शाना और पक्की भारतीय मेहमान नवाजी What does travel mean to a man whose job is to create the most beautiful and memorable holiday experiences? Let's find out. Just switching lanes a little bit. You know, India is a young country. More than 50% uh, of the population is below 25 years of age. Now, is there something special that the Taj Hotel group is kind of uh, thinking about in terms of the youth of India? Well, you know, it's a... I think it's, it's, it's one of our best kept secrets, for a matter of fact. Uh, if you, one looks today at looking at Asia and the growth of Asia, mm -hmm. and one always puts us China, India, India, China. Right. Remember, China has had a, a one-child policy for the last 40 years, yes. where, whereby India has 60% of our population under the age of 25. Correct. In 20 years from now, they'll be in their 40s. So the availability of, of labor, of that aspiring nature and growth of the economy. So for, for whether it's the Taj hotels, mm -hmm. whether it's airlines, whether it's travel, whether it's uh, cruise lines, all of these businesses all are part of world travel and tourism, which is the largest employer in the world. Over 10 to 12 percent of global GDP is generated through travel and tourism, something of which can grow because really it's at a nascent stage in this space. In India today has a 5% GDP from travel and tourism. And if we just met 10% the global, average. the global average, we would add 45 million jobs oh and over God. $50 billion to this economy today. So for a young person, Deciding on uh, a, 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 a hospitality, hospitality as a career, I'd say there's, the world is your oyster today. It is your pearl to choose from because it offers you a chance to grow very quickly as this grows. So hotels, so the most important is how do we retain and how do we nurture those, those people, the valuable asset that we have. That's through our hotel schools that we have, our learning centers, whether it's e-learning, however we can make that happen. Sure. Uh, and uh, so that is very important. And the ability to fast track an executive through their career sure. so that they stay with our company sure. and have opportunities in India or in the 15 other countries that we're in. Sure. And uh, Raymond, since you've been such a smart and savvy traveler yourself, 
and you've probably got not a million miles, but probably a few million miles, <laughs> would you like to share with our viewers some of the tips on travel, on choosing a hotel, what the do's and don'ts? I think for the traveler today, it's, uh, it's a wonderful time because, because of the internet. Of course. And I, essentially, one, one travel tip is that I think before you travel anywhere, know what you want to see and what you want to do. And I think it's our, our, our duty to look and see what their needs, whether it's Wi-Fi, whether it's 24-hour services, whether it's the technology that they have at home today. Right. For many, many years, uh, guests would come to a luxury hotel to experience um, things that they didn't have at home. Right. Today, you have plasma screens, you have stereo systems in your oh. cars, you have your Blackberries, you have all of this. So you must be totally wired and technology uh, savvy in your hotels. That's very important. And I say, in, as far as the traveler is concerned, uh, you, the, you can always travel light, always have uh, a nice warm jumper or sweater in the aircraft so you don't get, get, catch a cold. That's really a big, a, a big, comfortable shoes are always helpful. And today they have the best luggage, as you know, which can help you wheel through almost any security Situation, checkpoint that absolutely. you have. So these are really just you know, uh, small tidbits and, and light so that you're really uh, very comfortable when you go through all of these things. Right. We now come to the most exciting part of this program, which is the viewer's question of the week. Well, that special viewer, whoever gets this question right, can expect a luxury, romantic weekend for you and whomever you please. We will pick you up in Mumbai, if you're, not in, if you're not in Mumbai, at the airport in a Jaguar, or we'll pick you up at home. We will whisk you to the Taj Mahal Palace, Mumbai, where you will have a two-day luxury suite, a weekend package, staying in a one-bedroom luxury hotel uh, uh, a suite with breakfast, champagne, and a dinner for two in Masala Craft restaurant for that lucky viewer who gets this question right. The question for today is, in which year did the Taj Mahal Palace Hotel in Mumbai serve its first guest? To answer, log on to our website www.exploretelevision.com or email lwacontest at exploretelevision.com with your answer, name, address and contact number. Raymond, it's been an absolute delight for us to have you on our show on Explore Television. Thank you very much for being with us and we do hope that the Taj Mahal group goes from strength to strength in the years to come. Thank you so much for having me on your show, and I love the Explore Travel Channel. Thank you, Raymond. कहीं भी सफर करने से पहले इंटरनेट का इस्तेमाल करके अपनी मंजिल पर रिसर्च कीजिए और काम की जानकारी इकट्ठा कर लीजिए। जहां जा रहे हैं, वहां करना क्या है, देखना क्या है, इन चीजों को लेकर एक स्पष्ट नजरिए का होना जरूरी है। अच्छे क्वालिटी का लगेज प्रयोग करें, कम से कम सामान पैक करें और आरामदायक जूते पहनें। A wise man once said, "A journey is measured in friends rather than in miles. Traveling always rewards us with precious friends from around the world." Hope you enjoyed today's journey on Life Via with Ash. Until next time, bon voyage and keep exploring.